During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about old school farming versus new age farming. Well, that's kind of how we like to talk about it quite often, where it's the moldboard plow versus no-till. Honestly, Brian, it makes me a little uncomfortable even to have the conversation. Now, I'm not fully employing either of those systems. I like something in between, and I would venture to guess most farmers are somewhere in between. But there are kind of a couple of extremes here where I'm never going to do tillage. I think tillage is always bad, and this is how I'm going to do things, versus, hey, I'm going to do heavy tillage out on the farm. Now, I get concerned about the erosion, Brad, that's why okay. I'm not so big for the heavy tillage. All right, so we want to talk today just a little bit about what is moldboard plowing and what is no-till. So if you are a non-farmer, you can understand some of the things that we have to work through on the farm. So Darren just brought up soil erosion. If you go back to the 1930s, it was called the Dust Bowl, the Dirty 30s, because the only way to control weeds, insects, and diseases back then, and also to get a good seed bed, was to do massive amounts of tillage. Basically, make the ground black. Well, when you do that, now you're subject to erosion from wind and from rainfall, and that can obviously be problematic. But the thing that I like about moldboard plowing and what this basically is, is we're going to take the soil and we're gonna really turn it over maybe six, eight, 10, 12 inches deep. The thing that I like about it is now it is kind of stirring everything around. So if I laid some fertility on top, I laid some manure on top, now I can really get that down into the soil. So I'm excited about that. Also, when you moldboard plow, you're going to warm the soil up a little bit. You're going to speed the mineralization process so some of your organic matter releases more nutrients for you. In effect, you get some free fertilizer, in the short term anyway. So there are many advantages to moldboard plowing. Well, on the other side, Brian, let's look at some of the disadvantages. And we mentioned erosion. That's one that if you told me, hey, look, I guarantee you zero erosion off your field, I would be more interested in doing it. But here's some other things that are potentially negative. One is my organic matter levels in my soil are going to go down because I'm going to burn up that residue that much faster. Now, if you say I'm only looking at a one year gain, then I'd say, oh, well, then moldboard plowing is great. But if I'm going to farm this ground for the next 20 years, I don't want to do a whole bunch of moldboard plowing. At least I don't want to be doing it every year. So it's something that I'd say, well, maybe I'd consider it once every five years or once every 10 years. Well, the other thing is microbes. When we look at the microbes and we look at earthworms, they need a home that's kind of stable. And when you're going to completely disturb that, you could negatively influence what's going on with your microbial life and ultimately your soil health. Well, you could, but I don't know that in one year you're going to change all that much. Now let's talk about no-till. The big advantage is you don't have all this machinery running across the field. You don't have to take the time and the effort to get any work. And expense. Right, it, to, to get this work done. So that's great. The other thing is with the soil being left undisturbed, it is a it gives you a better chance to build soil organic matter. And hopefully, to Darren's point, we can improve overall soil health because there are more beneficial microbes and earthworms and everything else that has a nice home. Absolutely, and potentially we could avoid the compaction, which is another issue by doing heavy tillage. Yep, but but the downside to no-till that I look at is it's very common for people to get their nutrients stratified. So they apply fertilizer or manure on top of the ground and it doesn't go anywhere. So now all of a sudden all their fertility is on top and the roots are down below and they can't get it. Also, when you take a look at this compaction thing that you mentioned, well, if there was compaction going into your no-till and you don't do any tillage, how are you going to bust that compaction up? It usually just stays there and remains a problem for quite a long time unless you make some major changes, throw cover crops in, that kind of thing. The last thing I was going to throw in was your soil is colder. So it's very common to see much slower emergence in those no-till soils. And it's also common to see guys, instead of planting 100-day corn, they plant 95-day corn just to compensate for that. You can see there's some big advantages and disadvantages of both extremes here that we're talking about, which is why many farmers fall somewhere in between, not doing complete no-till and not doing super deep heavy tillage either. Fortunately, in both of those systems, you can still control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do that coming up later in the show.